recording. Okay. So it's a pleasure to welcome Siegfried Echterhoff, who will speak about irreducible system inclusions of fixed point algebras and cross products. So please, Siegfried, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the for the invitation first. Uh, yeah, this is this is a lecture about some some joint work with Mikael Röhrdam, which we just started two months ago or so. Um, and it was motivated by, by a lecture he gave uh, in Münster this summer, and where he asked the question and where I thought, hmm, maybe I have some ideas how to solve it, and this is, this is the outcome. But I should also say that what I'm talking about, what I will talk about is, uh, so I, I have to thank Masaki Izumi. I, I gave a lecture about the same topic three weeks ago. And at that time, our results were much more restrictive than they are now. And uh, uh, actually, um, Masaki gave uh, very, very uh, nice comments, uh, which, which helped us to improve the results a lot. And, 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 and I, should, I should really mention this at a prominent place. <laughs> So let's see, why does it not react now for, aha, it does now. Okay, so it's about C star irreducible inclusions of unital C star algebras. So this notation I think was uh, introduced by Mikael this year. And he says that two, <clears throat> an inclusion of two unital C star algebras, and I always mean a unital inclusion, which maps the unit of A to the unit of B, is C star irreducible if every intermediate C star algebra, so every C star algebra D, which sits between A and B, is also is simple. And of course, then A and B have to be simple C star algebras, otherwise. Um, what we want to do here is we want to study conditions on actions of groups, uh, say alpha from G to, to on A and, and beta of H on A with A a simple unital C star algebra, G discrete, H finite. And we want to consider the inclusion of the fixed point algebra by the finite group into the cross product by the other, by the maybe discrete group. And we want to study conditions under which this inclusion is a C star irreducible inclusion. And the, the, the motivation to do this is to give a positive answer to Mikhail's question. And his question was the following. So suppose we have a C star irreducible inclusion of two unital C star algebras A and B, so that both algebras A and B are AF algebras. So uh, AF algebras are um, inductive limits of finite dimensional C star algebras. The question was, is it possible that there is an intermediate algebra D, which is not an AF algebra? So if we have a C star irreducible inclusion, which is a very tight inclusion of uh, uh, one AF algebra into another, can I have that that is an algebra in between, which is not AF? And we want to give actually a positive answer to it. So we will show that this is indeed possible. And of course, you can. Um, we expect that the examples are of this type. So um, I, should, I should also mention that there's a weaker notion of, uh, of inclusion. So a, 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 a unital inclusion of A into B is called irreducible if the commutator of A inside B is just the complex numbers. And uh, this notion has been studied a lot in von Neumann algebra. And so if you have two von Neumann algebras and an inclusion of one in of von Neumann algebra N into M, and it is in irreducible in the sense so that N prime intersect, prime intersect M is the complex numbers, then of course, every intermediate von Neumann algebra D must be a factor. So um, since of course the commutator of D intersect with D sits in the commutator of N intersect with M, so this already is the complex numbers. So, and in von Neumann theory, of course, the factor is what in C star theory is a simple C star algebra. So um, uh, there should be a strong connection between irreducibility and, and C star irreducibility. But Mikhail constructed explicit examples which show that these notions are not the same. So there are 
in inclusion, irreducible inclusions of A into B, which are not C star irreducible. But the, the converse is always true. So if, if you have a C star irreducible inclusion, then it's always irreducible. Because if the commutator of A prime inside, inside B is not the complex numbers, then we find an, an, an element B in this algebra, which is not invertible in B. And then if you take the C star algebra, which is, uh, which is generated by A and this element B, and you multiply it with B, with B, then this is a proper ideal in this algebra. And of course, this algebra, C star A, B is an intermediate algebra. So this is C star irreducible. It has to be simple. A proper ideal, so that gives a contradiction. And actually, we will see below that in, in many interesting situations, these two notions uh, do coincide, but, but they do not coincide in general. So, um, sister irreducibility has something to do with fullness. So, and recall that if you have an, a sister positive element in a sister algebra, we call it full. If the ideal generated by this element is all of A. And uh, if you have a simple C star algebra, then of course every element is, every non zero uh, positive element is full because uh, every ideal which is not zero is the whole thing. And uh, the, in, in the study for C star irreducible inclusions, uh, Mikhail introduced the notion of. Uh, of an element, so if you have an inclusion of A into B, he says that a positive element of B is full relative to A, if it's full in the C star algebra generated by A and B. And uh, then he showed that if you have an inclusion, a unital inclusion of A into B, then the following are equivalent. So every non-zero positive element is full relative to A, so it satisfies this condition. Whenever you take a non-zero element in B plus, then it is full in C star A B. Um, that is equivalent to saying that every non-zero positive element, for every non-zero positive element, there exists an element in the span of A B A, which is invertible in C star A B. And uh, this can be even um, made more restrictive by saying, so for every non-zero ele element in B plus, you find element X1 to XL in A, such that the sum from one to L, where you conjugate B with X XI, so you take XI B XI star, so that this sum is bigger than the unit of B. So then it's of course invertible. May, yeah. may, may I ask a sure. question? Your span includes completion, right? Yeah, but uh, um, I mean, this does not have to. You this have doesn't have to. Um, let's see. I mean, if if this intersection would be empty, then it would also be empty for the completion because you see the invertible elements are open. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether you take completion here or not. So. Uh, but yeah, yeah, well, okay, but it appeared in the previous span already appeared in the previous slide. Yeah, so here. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so in, in there. But here also, here, here you have a unital C star algebra, so uh, this, this, this is an ideal in A, which convert, in, in, has an invertible element, so it has to be in all of A. So it's also, you don't need completion here, I, I think. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Uh, invert in, invertible element, and it's it's all it's a whole thing. Right. Uh, actually, when I prepared this, at some point I made uh, I made completion everywhere, and then I thought, oh, it's not really necessary. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, all these conditions, they are ac actually equivalent to saying that A inside B is uh, C star irreducible. And the the proofs, I mean, the equivalences between one, two, and three, they follow from some technical technical computations are easy. So I don't want to get into those, 
but uh, so the direction. So if you have some invertible element here in the span of A, B, A inside the, the, the distal algebra generated by A and B. So if you find an invertible element here, then it's of course also an invertible element in the span of D, small d, D inside the invertible elements of D. And that means already that this ideal is all of D. So it says that every element, every element in D, you can apply this to every element in D, uh, is already full in D, which says that D is simple. So that proves that if you have this condition two, and then of course, if you have this condition three, then the inclusion has to be C star reducible. And uh, say, the other direction is also easy. If the, if the, if the inclusion is C star irreducible, then every non-zero element of B has to be full relative to A, because if you take any non-zero element in B plus, then C star AB is an intermediate algebra between A and B. And since the inclusion is C star irreducible, this has to be simple. And then every element in the simple C star algebra, which is non-zero, has to be full. So uh, that proves this gives basically the ideas for this for this proposition. And this proposition is is a, is an important tool to prove uh, uh, the results uh, we need. We want to show it later. So we come to dynamical systems and cross products. So just just to short so, remind so, so, us. Yeah. May I ask you? A, may I ask you a question? Yeah. W would this also be equivalent? to saying that every singly generated uh, subalgebra of B, and by singly generated, I mean generated by A together with a single element B. Yeah. Would the, would the whole thing be equivalent to the fact that every singly generated algebra is simple? Yeah, because, because uh, if that is the case, then you obviously have this condition. Do you have? I think, yeah, yes. Then, then you can prove condition two or three. Right, okay. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm not mistaken, I, I think it's, uh, it's clear that this is, uh, this is also uh, equivalent, right? Thanks. So, um, yeah. So we, we have an action of a group on the c star algebra. It's of course a homomorphism in the, in the group of star automorphisms of the c star algebra. And uh, when that, which is just the formal sums of all A, G, U, G, where the A, G are elements in A and these sums are of finite, these are finite sums. So the A, Gs are non-zero only for finitely many group elements. And uh, the multiplication and the, in, 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 in the involution are just given by these relations. So UG times A times UG to the minus one is just alpha G of A. So alpha is implemented as by the, uh, uh, by the unitaries UG. And the, the, the uh, convolution line, the involution is given by A UG star is UG to the minus one A star. So this gives you all uh, rules for, for this algebra. And the full and reduced cross products, which, uh, which we usually consider as certain completions, C star completions of this algebraic cross product, it's not so necessary for us to know by what norms. So there's a maximal and the regular C star norm. Um, and we have canonical inclusions, which comes directly from the picture. So I always assume A here to be unital to make things easier. So we always have an inclusion of A into the cross product, which maps an element A to A times UE. This is the, the unitary, which corresponds to the trivial element of G, which is of course the unit in this thing. And we have also a map from G into the unitary, so if A is unital, we don't need the multiplier algebra sign here, and into the unitary operators or elements of this cross product, uh, which is just G goes to this element UG. And if the group is finite, all three cross products are the same, so then the maximal and the reduced and the algebraic cross products, they all coincide, but in general, uh, of course, you have to take real completions. So then, a star automorphism is called inner 
if there exists a unitary element in A, if A is unital in A, if A is not unital, you have to take the multiplier algebra such that phi of A is just the adjoint action. So it's U A U star, so at U of A. And an, an automorphism is outer if it's not inner. So it's outer if there's no unitary such that alpha is given by at U. And then there's a very famous and classical theorem by Kishimoto. He proved that if you have a, a discrete group and you have an outer action of the group on a simple C star algebra A, in that theorem it doesn't have to be unital, just on simple C star algebra, then the reduced cross product is also always simple. So in that situation, of course, you have then an inclusion of the simple C star algebra A into the simple cross product. So it's a candidate for a C star irreducible inclusion if, if A is unital. So, and the proof of Kishimoto's theorem is based on, so the, the main step is, is to get this basic lemma by Kishimoto, which says the following. So if you have a simple C star algebra and if you have alpha one to alpha n, which are outer automorphisms of A, and you have n elements in A, A1 to An, and some epsilon greater zero be given, then there always exists a positive element in A with norm one, such that if you somehow dynamically compress the AI with X, that means you take the, you take the product of X with the AIs, and then you apply the automorphism alpha i to x, and then you take the norm, then this, this becomes very small. So it's smaller than epsilon for all i. And to get an idea, I mean, um, why this has probably something to do with outerness, I mean, you, if, you, if you just think of a space, uh, so a space, let's, let's just look at the case of commutative C star algebra, which is C of x for some x, then the only inner action is a trivial action. So an outer action is, is, is an action which always it moves at least one point, say here's a point and, and it's moved to some other place. And then it's clear that you can find some, such an element X because then you, it's also there's a small neighborhood which is moved maybe to another small neighborhood. And if you just take a function which is supported in this neighborhood, Sorry, we then do the not product see is going right. to be zero. Sorry? We do not see what you are writing, at least I don't. Yeah, but you see my, my, my arrow, hopefully. Do you see the arrow? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I thought I cannot you, were, you were, oh, okay, okay. I yes, this is all I can do here because, you know, I mean, I wanted to do this on my iPad, but I left it home today. Okay. So it's not only one accident, there were more accidents. So point here goes to point here neighborhood here goes to a neighborhood here. And if you take a function X, which is supported here, and then it's moved by the automorphism here, and then you take the product, so it even becomes zero, right? And so in that case, of course, it doesn't matter what you put in between, because then if it's commutative, you can take it out. But so just to, to get an idea what this condition here could have to do with outerness, but it's, it's really a very deep lemma. I mean, the lemma is really the deep theorem. And uh, I will, I will um, give the, basically the argument why C star irreducibility also uh, and simplicity follows from this lemma later, but I do this in the more general situation we want to, uh, we want to study. So this is really the important result. And uh, so there's a theorem by, which was given by, proved by Izumi in 2002 for finite groups and by Cameron and Smith in 2019, which basically also uses variants of this Kishimoto lemma, which I mentioned before, and which says that if you have an, a, 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 an outer action of a discrete group on a simple C star algebra, a unital and simple C star algebra, so this theorem uses unit, unitality of A, then every intermediate C star algebra, so every C star algebra between A and the cross product is, is a cross product, is a cross product by some subgroup H of G. So now, if you use this theorem, you see that um, if the action is outer 
of course, and also the restriction of the action to the subgroup is outer. By Kishimoto's theorem, these cross products are all simple. And then you see as a conclusion that in this case, every intermediate C star algebra of A and the cross product has to be simple. So it is a C star irreducible inclusion by definition of C star irreducibility. So then, and the, actually, the, yeah. Sorry, the hypothesis of the theorem does not include that the action is outer. But if uh, it is then, outer, then, you no, get simplicity. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I forgot it. The action has to be outer. So the, it, the uh, hypothesis should include the action is outer. I said it, but, but it's, uh, I forgot it to write it. So let alpha be an outer action. I said as above. So and as above is outer action. But of course, this is in the previous slide. So I should have said, but I said it's outer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, it's necessary to be outer. If, if it's not outer, it's, it's not true. Yeah, so it has to be outer. So, and uh, you can now maybe uh, combine these things to, to get the following statement. Uh, so it comes from Kishimoto, Cameron Smith, and then Mikhail, say, but it's just um, putting things together. So if you have an outer action, now, nah, if you have an action, so this, this is, if you have an action of G on a C star algebra, which with G discrete, A unital and simple, then the following are equivalent. The inclusion is C star irreducible. The inclusion is irreducible. Every cross product by a subgroup of G is simple and the action is outer. So outerness is even equivalent to uh, having a C star irreducible inclusion. And this is also in, uh, in this case equivalent to irreducibility, which in general is a weaker condition, but uh, in this situation, uh, it, is, it is the same. And uh, the proofs of one implies two, we already know that we saw in general, one implies three is clear because A cross alpha RH is an intermediate algebra. So if this is C star irreducible, it has to be simple for every subgroup. Um, and four implies one is, is uh, also clear from, from the theorem I, I mentioned above. So this is a consequence of this theorem. And irreducibility, that, that irreducibility itself is enough for all the others. Uh, for this, we need two implies four. So if you find an element in G, such that alpha G is not outer, so there's a unitary in A, so alpha, that alpha G is equal to at U, then we also have that if we take this element UG in the cross product, it also implements alpha. So if we take the product of U star UG and conjugate A with this, we see that it's just alpha G of A, and then we apply alpha G to the minus one to this. So it is A, and it means that just this unitary here commutes with A. So it's in A prime, and it's in the cross product, but it's not in C because UG does not lie in A. So it cannot be in, in uh, multiple of the unit. So you see uh, if, um, if, Irreducibility, no. If outerness fails, then irreducibility fails. So we see two implies four. So in this situation, uh, we see that irreducibility and C star reducibility are the same. So fixed point algebra. So if we have an action of a finite group on a unitary C star algebra, then we call by AH the fixed point algebra. So the elements in A, which are fixed by the automorphisms. And um, there's an important observation due to Jonathan Rosenberg. So if you take, if you sum up the unitaries in the cross product, so these are the canonical unitaries coming from the group elements in the cross product. And if you take the norm sum of these, you get a projection. And then there's a canonical isomorphism of the fixed point algebra into the corner of the cross product by this projection. So if you compress the, the, the cross product by this projection, you just get the fixed point algebra. And this isomorphism is just given by sending an A in, in the fixed point algebra to A times P, which is then this element. So if A is simple 
and the action is out, now we know that the cost product is simple by Kishimoto's theorem. And then the fixed point algebra is the corner of a simple C star algebra, but we know that corners of simple C star algebras are always simple. They are Morita equivalent to the C star algebra. So it shows that if we have an outer action, then the fixed point algebra is always a simple inclusion of the simple C star algebra A. So, uh, and A is simple, of course. And so it's a candidate again for, for, for C star irreducible inclusion. And in fact, Izumi proved in 2002 um, that whenever you have a finite group which acts on a simple C star algebra and you have an outer by an outer action, then he proved that every intermediate C star algebra is also a fixed point algebra for some fact, subgroup L in H. So it's kind of the opposite result of the Cameron Smith result for fixed point algebras. And in particular, it follows from this that the inclusion here into A is C star reducible because the fixed point algebras in between are also fixed point algebras for outer actions. So they must be simple. So every intermediate algebra is simple. Uh, so this is a C star irreducible inclusion. So fixed point algebras in A is irreducible, A into the cost product is irreducible. So we now want to combine this. Um, so we want to show if we, have, if we have an action alpha of G on A and uh, G is the discrete group and an action beta of H on A, these are outer actions, G discrete, H finite, A unital and simple. And when, then we want to study this inclusion. So we know both algebras are simple, but under what conditions do we get a C star irreducible inclusion? And there was a result in von Neumann theory by Bisch and Hagerup from 96. They showed that if you have a discrete group acting on a no, finite. So in this case, in this theorem, both groups are supposed to be finite. So P is uh, type to one factor. So you have two actions of uh, the action of G on, the, on a two one factor, action of H on a two one factor by two finite groups. Then they proved that the, in, the fixed point algebra inclusion of P into the cost product by G is irreducible, irreducible, if and only if the composition of these uh, uh, automorphisms beta H, so alpha G circ beta H is outer for every non-trivial element G H in the, in the product group. So this is, so they stated it in the way that they say the image of the groups in the outer automorphism group uh, has trivial intersection, which is actually equivalent to this statement. There is, uh, sorry, Sifi, there is a question in the chat on whether H okay. has to be a subgroup of G or not in the vision. Uh, no, 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 not a subgroup. No, these, these are completely independent. Um, I mean, I do not expect any, any, any connection between H and G. These that are just two groups acting on the same C star algebra. Actually, if H would be a subgroup of G, then we will, will learn, if H is a subgroup of G, we will learn that this inclusion is never C star reducible. Because if this is the case, then um, you see that this condition here cannot, cannot be true because then, um, so, I mean, if, if you have a subgroup, you all, all, I think you would always also assume that the action beta is just the restriction of alpha. I mean, that, that would for me be the, um, natural um, second <laughs> assumption. And then you see that if you take H to here and H here, this would be trivial and would not be an outer automorphism. So, so they have to be apart somehow. Uh, so what we can prove um, is the following theorem. And I said again, so I should give Many thanks to Masaki Izumi, who helped us to improve uh, the results. So our first version and the one which you find on the archive is, is much more restrictive. So let us, let's uh, give an action of G on A and of H on A, G discrete, H finite, uh, and A is a unitary and simple C star algebra. Then the following are equivalent. 
So the inclusion of the fixed point algebra in the cost product is irreducible. The inclusion is steista irreducible. And this third condition, the composition alpha G with beta H is outer for all non-trivial pairs G H in the product G cross H. So I should say that our version, which you find in the paper in the, on the archive, we assumed that in addition to the assumptions here that H was uh, a billion and that the that the that both actions alpha and beta commute and we do not need these conditions anymore so h can be arbitrary and the actions do not have to commute we just need this condition that uh, uh, the, these automorphisms are outer and actually um, the abelianness um, we had the abelianness assumption because we could we, we could prove izumi's result that the fixed point algebra inclusion is Reduced, irreducible just for the abelian case, and we, we, we were not aware of uh, Izumi's result, which was, of course, uh, uh, not good. I mean, <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, it was good that he, uh, that he made us aware. And uh, also for the other condition, this the commut commutativity, uh, he pointed actually out that there's actually a very tiny tiny change in our argument gave exactly the same proof with, without this assumption. So, so this is really a, a great progress and we are very grateful for this. So let's, uh, let's go into the proof of this theorem. So, um, well, D, that should not be D, that should be a B. So I, B implies A, we already know in general, and A implies C is easy, I don't go into the details. We, we saw the details for cost product before, this is a similar argument. So what is really interesting is only the step that C implies B. And this we want to, we want to look into uh, uh, more, in more detail. So we want to use C to prove a Kishimoto type result, uh, the result which like, like this Kishimoto lemma I mentioned before in this, in this situation, and then use this to give, to give the proof. And the lemma, the Kishimoto type result we, want, we, we need is, so suppose that the condition C holds, so that these automorphisms are outer for all non-trivial elements. So suppose that this holds, then for all A1 to AN in A, um, epsilon greater zero, and I should have said non-trivial elements G1 to GN in G, so they have to be non-trivial, they should not be the unit. There exists a positive element in the fixed point algebra with norm one, such that these compressions of AJ times alpha, yeah, by Y and alpha J Y on the, uh, y on the left, alpha J Y on the right, becomes smaller than epsilon for all, for all J. And alpha J, uh, is just a shortcut for alpha gj for these elements. But these have to be uh, non-trivial, I, I, I should say. Uh, they have to be outer automorphisms. Yeah, so to see this, we fix, an, we fix an element in H and we apply Kishimoto's lemma, which I mentioned before, for the cross products for these elements in A, where I let j go from through H, and to these elements, which are all outer, where I should, yeah, they are all outer for all S in, in H and, and J. And they are outer, this follows from the condition C, because if you, this is just because if you, um, if you conjugate an outer automorphism by some outer, other automorphism, it stays outer. So you get that these are outer. So this gives us an, a positive element in A with norm one, so that these expressions here become smaller than say epsilon divided by the square of the order of H. And then we can apply the automorphism beta S to these elements inside the norm to get that the norm of beta S Y zero AJ and then alpha J beta ty0 is smaller than epsilon 
divided by the order of h squared for all s and t. And then we can just take y1 to be the sum of the uh, of, of s in h beta s y0. This gives then a positive element in the fixed point algebra. And then you can just use these, these, uh, um, these inequalities to get this inequality for this element y1. This is almost, in, this is basically the inequality we want to have in, in this lemma. So the only thing which might go wrong so far is that this, this element y1 does not have norm one. So, but if we, if we divide it by its norm, then it's exactly an element as in dilemma. So we see that this modified Kishimoto lemma almost follows directly from Kishimoto's original lemma. And having this, we can now give a proof of, uh, of uh, C implies B. So let's go again. So C was this condition that this composition alpha G to beta H is outer. And we want to use this to prove that this inclusion is C star irreducible. And so we, we, we show that every positive element in the cross product is full relative to the fixed point algebra. So by the proposition I had before, this is equivalent to say that the inclusion is C star irreducible. So that means full relative to the fixed point algebra that was characterized as follows. So we, have, we, we can show that this is true if we can show that there exist elements C1 to Cl in the fixed point algebra such that if I take the sum from one to L of Ci star X Ci, then this is bigger than one. And of course, I mean, I can uh, approximate every element in the cross product by um, element in the algebraic cross product and just assume we, we already showed that this approximation doesn't doesn't, doesn't make anything uh, wrong. So, so we just assume that X is already in the algebraic cross product. So it's a fun, some, some finite sum A, G, U, G. So we have a conditional expectation from the reduced cross product to A, which sends such a formal sum to the uh, coefficient of the unit. And this is faithful, so it sends positive non-zero elements to positive non-zero elements. So if X is a non-zero positive element, then E of X is a non-zero positive element in A plus. And by, we already know that the fixed point algebra inclusion of AH in A is C star irreducible. So we can find B1 to BL in, in the fixed point algebra such that if I take the sum of one to L of BI star E of X BI, then this is bigger than one. So here I just conjugated by elements in the fixed point algebra. So if I replace my original element X by X tilde, which I take by taking the sum BI star X BI, um, I have not given up anything. So I can just go on with this element. So I can assume without loss of generality that the, the, the value of the conditional expectation of X is bigger than one. And so what we have so far is we, we assume without loss of generality, we have an X in, in the algebraic cross product with such that the conditional expectation to X maps it to an element bigger than one. Then if, we, if I start with an epsilon between zero and one, the Kishimoto type lemma says that I find an element in AH plus a positive element in the fixed point algebra with norm one such that if I take the compression of X minus E X by this element Y. So if I write this out, this is a compression of the sum G not equal to E, A G U G, this is a finite sum by this Y. And so if I use this condition that U G Y is the same as alpha G Y U G, I, I get that this, so if I put Y into the sum, I get these, the summons become Y, A, G, alpha, G, Y, U, G. So you see these are exactly the same things which appear in the Kishimoto lemma. I can make these small and the U, G doesn't do, don't do anything to the norm. So we can choose a Y which makes all these things say smaller than epsilon over the order of F so that the whole thing becomes smaller than epsilon. So then this is a positive element with norm less than epsilon. So the element here can be 
included between minus epsilon one and epsilon one. And so you get then from this, the following inequality in this algebra. So yxy becomes bigger than y e x y minus epsilon one. That's e x is bigger than one. So this element is bigger than y squared. So this is bigger than y squared minus epsilon one. So, and now I can conjugate it with y again. So I get it's y squared x y squared is bigger or equal to y to the power four minus epsilon y squared. And then we do a little bit of uh, functional calculus. So I take a continuous function from the reals into the unit interval, which is zero on, uh, on the interval between zero and square root of epsilon and is one at the point one. And then I take the element D as f of y, y squared minus epsilon y squared f of y, and then doing a little bit, a little exercise in, in functional calculus shows that this is really a non-zero positive element in the fixed point algebra, so y is in the fixed point algebra. So this is a positive non-zero element in the fixed point algebra. So the fixed point algebra is simple, means we can find finitely many elements in the fixed point algebra so that this sum, AI star DAI is again bigger or equal to one. Actually, since it's simple, we can even make it equal to one in this case, but uh, bigger equal to one is enough. So, and then we can finally can take our CIs to be its Y squared, F of Y, AI. All these elements are in the fixed point algebra. And if we take this sum CI star XCI, we see that this is some ai star f of y, y square x, y square f of y ai, but this y square x, y square, this is bigger or equal to y to the power four minus epsilon uh, squared. And if I conjugate this with f of y, I just get my element d. So this is just the sum ai star d ai, and that was bigger than one. 